The US Navy has just deployed a weapon that moves so fast, some are calling it faster than the speed of light. It's not science fiction, it's a real system, firing real beams at real targets, and it strikes almost instantly. Michio Kaku says this changes everything we know about modern warfare. Is this a breakthrough into the next era of physics, or just the clever use of light itself? Let's break it down. A Physicist's Bold Claim in 25, theoretical physicist Michio Kaku made headlines by doubling down on a claim that had long simmered on the fringes of scientific discourse. During a televised Big Think panel in March 25, he referenced the now infamous U.S. Princeton and U.S. Russell UAP footage, military videos captured between 2004 and 2019, where unknown aerial objects exhibited what he called non-Newtonian motion. The most provocative clip, time-stamped 140732 GMT, showed an object accelerating from Mach 5 to Mach 20 in less than 2.3 seconds, without visible propulsion, sonic booms, or thermal signatures. Even more astonishing, one appeared to plunge beneath the ocean's surface and continue traveling at high velocity, something no known craft can survive. Kaku's conclusion was stark. If these were engineered systems, they implied a new law of engineering. For Kaku, speculation begins where verified data leaves off. He reminded viewers that 90% of UAP sightings cataloged by U.S. defense agencies, including the 21 UAP Task Force report, have mundane explanations. Sensor glitches, atmospheric refraction, or classified domestic tech. But it's the remaining 10%, roughly 144 out of 137 cases as of April 25, that resist easy answers. Some involved visual confirmation by trained military pilots like CMDR David Fravor, corroborated by ANSPY-1 radar arrays, and backed by infrared targeting pods. These aren't YouTube hoaxes or TikTok myths. Kaku urges researchers to treat them as potential anomalies, windows into new physical regimes, not as UFO folklore. Still, he walks a tightrope between curiosity and caution. Faster than light, FTL, travel, as popularly imagined, remains forbidden under special relativity. No object with mass can cross that threshold without requiring infinite energy, a constraint etched into the universe's Lorentz transformations. Yet Kaku turns to general relativity, and with it, concepts like Alcubierre drives, wormholes, and Casimir vacuums. These would need negative energy densities on a planetary scale, equivalent to converting Jupiter's mass into exotic matter. In his words, we're not talking about breaking physics, we're talking about extending it. But to do so, he emphasizes, we'd need instruments capable of picosecond timing and terahertz resolution tools still in prototype labs. Perhaps his most urgent point is epistemological. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. Citing past paradigm shifts, from the heliocentric model to quantum tunneling, Kaku reminds viewers how once dismissed ideas can become foundational, but only when anchored in repeatable data. He recommends reanalyzing Navy UAP footage using frame-by-frame -frame decomposition multi-angle radar cross-matching, and hyperspectral scanning. In his 25 lecture at Caltech, he proposed building a national anomaly registry, backed by AI-powered forensics, to sift authentic high-velocity data from noise. If these phenomena are real, he says, we owe it to science to find out what they're not, before deciding what they might be. While Michio Kaku points toward the theoretical, the U.S. Navy has been busy engineering the practical, since 2014, they have deployed systems once confined to science fiction, directed energy weapons capable of striking at the speed of light. Systems like LOFS and HELIOS represent not the bending of physics, but the apex of it. As Kaku might say, the Navy isn't building warp drives yet, but it is turning photons into firepower. Let's now examine what the Navy has actually built and what it signals about the battlefield of the future what the Navy has actually built. While speculation swirls around unidentified aerial phenomena, the United States Navy has remained grounded in a different kind of reality, one powered not by mystery, but by megawatts and precision optics. 
In 2014, aboard the U.S. Ponce, the Navy deployed its first operational Lub us the Laser Weapon System, a solid-state beam capable of disabling drones and small boats in seconds. Controlled by a single console operator, the Law ws prototype drew power from the ship's grid, delivering scalable laser output between 15 and 30 kilowatts. Unlike missiles or bullets, it had no recoil, no reloads, and no trajectory lag, just a beam of coherent light traveling at 2,000 kilometers per second. By Twinu, development had accelerated. Enter Helios, the high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance, an evolution in directed energy warfare. Installed on Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, Helios delivered 60 kilowatts of power with design pathways toward 150 and even 300 kilowatts by 26. Integrated with the Aegis combat system, it could track and strike incoming threats using onboard radar, delivering precise damage or dazzling optical systems at ranges up to 10 kilometers. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons, Helios operates on electrical current, meaning as long as the ship has power, it can keep firing. No magazines, no payload limits. But as we marvel at lasers striking at the speed of light, it's critical to ask, what does speed of light really mean in a physics context? Michio Kaku reminds us that while directed energy operates at light speed, no known object with mass can match it. The Navy's lasers don't bend space, they obey it. So, before we get carried away with talk of warp drives, we need a hard reset. Let's now explore why light remains the ceiling, and not a doorway, for physical speed. Speed versus light. Physicist Albert Einstein's 1905 theory of special relativity placed a hard limit on motion. No object with mass can travel faster than light in a vacuum. See X 299 Nissan 92,058 ms. This isn't just a number, it's the keystone of modern physics. Any object nearing this speed gains infinite mass and would require infinite energy to accelerate further. As Michio Kaku explains in his 25 Big Think Symposium, light speed is not just fast, it's final. Lasers like Helios and Laws may fire beams at that velocity, but the photons themselves carry no rest mass. Missiles, drones, or aircraft do, and thus remain bound by far lower thresholds. Still, General Relativity, published by Einstein in 1915, introduced a loophole. Space-time itself can bend, twist, and stretch. In theory, if one could compress space in front of a vessel and expand it behind, the ship could ride a wave of warped space, never moving faster than light locally, but appearing to move faster from an external frame. This is the basis of the Alcubierre drive, proposed in 94 by physicist Miguel Alcubierre. But to create such a bubble, you'd need negative energy density, a form of exotic matter yet to be observed. So, what makes lasers special, if not faster than light magic? Their power lies not in breaking limits, but in obeying them perfectly. Unlike ballistic projectiles, lasers don't arc, drift, or miss due to gravity. They strike in straight lines, instantly. As we turn to section 4, we'll explore what laser beams actually do on contact. Not warp engines or force fields, but pure, precise, instantaneous impact. The closest thing our world has to sci-fi weapons, without crossing into fiction. Laser beams. Lasers are often misunderstood. To the average viewer, they look like cinematic energy bolts. But in military reality, systems like Lab OS 2014 and Helios 22 onward fire coherent light across narrow bandwidths, striking targets instantaneously. A 60 km Helios beam, when locked on a drone for just three seconds, can melt sensors, burn control surfaces, or blind optics from six kilometers away. There is no arc, no lag, and no audible roar, only silence, light, and a sudden failure on the target's side. The effectiveness of these weapons lies in their energy density and precision targeting. When the U.S. Portland tested its solid-state laser technology maturation SSL -TM, system in May 20, it brought down a Quadrotor drone with a single beam, tracked by infrared targeting and guided by radar lock systems. The impact was invisible to the naked eye, but onboard diagnostics recorded damage in under 4.2 seconds. In modern naval combat, this response time is the difference between interception and impact. But 
With every revolutionary system comes media exaggeration. And with lasers, the line between reality and hype is thin. Enter Michio Kaku again as a calming voice. While he admires the Navy's progress, he warns against speculative leaps, the kind that mistake speed of light for beyond light. In section five, we'll hear Kaku dissect the difference between science and sci-fi, frame by frame. Because when public excitement overshoots evidence, even real breakthroughs risk becoming misunderstood legends. Kaku's insight. In a March 25 Big Think interview, Michio Kaku addressed the resurgence of public fascination with directed energy, alien tech, and the misunderstood language of impossible speeds. He praised the Navy's transparency in releasing UAP footage and showcasing Helios demonstrations. But he warned, just because something moves fast doesn't mean it defies physics. Videos of UAP zipping across radar screens at Mach 20 are not proof of exotic drives. They're calls for better instrumentation. In Kaku's words, always ask, what's the frame rate? What's the sensor range? Kaku's point is methodological. He emphasizes rigorous frame-by-frame -frame analysis, using calibrated timestamps, radar cross-section mapping, and infrared spectrum overlap. A bird at 300 meters, when tracked by phased array radar on NSPY-6 systems, can appear to blink across kilometers due to parallax error. A jet at 15,000 feet can flicker on thermal cams if a sensor gate shifts unexpectedly. In a Caltech symposium, April 25, he reminded attendees, data without context is just noise. Laser weapons. When the first public test of the Laos system hit the news in November 2014, headlines dubbed it, Star Wars Come True. But Michio Kaku offered a more grounded view. This isn't the Death Star, he joked during a 2015 Discovery Channel appearance. It's a flashlight with a PhD. Still, over the next decade, those flashlights got serious. The Navy invested over $500 million in directed energy R&D between 2016 and 24, transitioning from lab prototypes to operational shipboard systems across multiple fleets. Kaku classifies such technologies as Class 1 impossibilities, inventions that are impractical today but do not violate known physical laws. Handheld laser rifles, plasma torches, even sword-length ion blades. He's discussed them all in interviews from 20 to 25. The main barrier, power. Current lasers demand energy draws of 60 to 150 kilo supplied by entire naval vessels. Miniaturizing that to backpack scale requires breakthroughs in superconducting materials, microfusion, or graphene capacitors, none of which are field ready. Speed, precision, infinite ammunition. These are the tactical gifts of light. But the real shift comes not in what lasers destroy, but in how they change military timing. In Section 7, we explore why directed energy defense leaves opponents with no time to think, and how it marks a turning point in the tempo of warfare. Because when weapons strike at light speed, response becomes prediction, and the battlefield becomes something else entirely. Tactical Edge Imagine a hostile drone approaching a destroyer in the Persian Gulf, traveling at Mach 8. From launch to impact, the Navy has 18 seconds to detect, track, and intercept. Traditional defenses, like CRAM or Phalanx CIBUS, require mechanical rotation, projectile computation, and kinetic timing. But a Helios laser, locked on by radar in under 1.2 seconds, delivers disabling energy at light speed, 289 meters per second. That means the drone receives damage virtually the moment it's detected. There is no arc, no trail, and no second chance. This instant reaction window reshapes naval tactics. In a 25 war game simulation conducted off Naval Station Norfolk, Helios-equipped ships intercepted simulated hypersonic threats at distances of 7 kilometers, reacting in under 2.8 seconds from radar lock to beam contact. These were no mere tests. In real-world deployments during 24 counter-piracy operations, lasers were used to disable the control surfaces of uncrewed surface vessels USVs, preventing them from breaching 500-meter exclusion zones around high-value ships. No explosives, no splash just silence and shutdown. 
Because the most powerful weapon is not always the loudest, it's the one you never see coming. Future Evolution As of mid-25, the U.S. Navy has fielded Helios Mark I aboard multiple Arlam Burke-class destroyers, with power outputs of 60-100 to 100 core, but inside testing facilities like Naval Research Laboratory NRL, and NSVALC Dahlgren, engineers are pushing for the next frontier. Directed energy systems delivering 150 to 300 K enough to intercept supersonic cruise missiles at 12 kilometers. In controlled trials conducted in March 25, prototype lasers successfully tracked and degraded mock targets traveling at Mach 2.5, signaling readiness for theater-level deployment by 2027. Integration is key. Future lasers will be woven into the Aegis combat system, allowing seamless coordination with radar, sonar, and kinetic options. A high-powered beam could soften incoming threats, allowing ESSM or standard missiles to finish the job or eliminate the threat entirely without munitions. In exercises held near Guam in July 25, test ships demonstrated real-time fusion between Helios, SBI-6 radar, and cooperative engagement capability, CEC networks, delivering light-speed targeting data to allied vessels within 200 milliseconds. Because in warfare, the sharpest edge isn't just technological, it's psychological. Implications for strategy and security. The arrival of directed energy weapons introduces more than new tools. It rewrites the rhythm of conflict. With light speed engagement, there's no delay, no intercept window, no time to counter. This forces adversaries to rethink missile barrages, swarm tactics, and sensor-based surveillance. In joint exercises in the South China Sea, April 25, U.S. vessels equipped with Helios cut through simulated UAV formations in less than five minutes, with a 98% hit rate. Adversaries now face a calculus they can't outspend, energy versus attrition. Logistically, lasers reduce the burden on supply chains. No powder magazines, no explosive crates, no rearming cycles. A destroyer with a stable reactor and a functioning Helios unit can remain in theater indefinitely, constrained only by cooling and maintenance. According to the 25 Navy Strategic Outlook, this cuts resupply costs by 17% per year across two Pacific fleets. The shift to energy-based weapons could enable sustained presence in conflict zones with far fewer logistics ships. So, with lasers here and expanding fast, where do we draw the line between advanced and impossible? In section 10, we return to the question that sparked it all. Can the Navy build a faster than light weapon? Let's conclude by separating metaphor from physics and hope from hype. Because science's edge is not where imagination ends, but where reality begins to stretch. Can the Navy build a FTL weapon? In short, no. At least not in the literal physical sense. The United States Navy's directed energy weapons, from Laos 2014 to Helios 2025, operate at light speed, but they do not exceed it. They emit photons, not warp fields. In Michio Kaku's 25 monograph, he categorizes faster than light FTL technology as a class 3 impossibility, forbidden by known laws of physics requiring changes not in engineering, but in space-time itself. This is not pessimism, it's precision. So, has the Navy truly built a faster-than-light weapon? Not in the literal sense, but in precision, in speed, in how it erases time from combat. It has redefined what instant means. These beams do not travel faster than light. They are light. And for now, that is more than enough to change the shape of warfare. As Michio Kaku reminds us, sometimes the future isn't about breaking the rules. It's about mastering them, perfectly. <laughs>